Hello, Just Too Good here with the LEGO Jurassic Park 30th Anniversary Set Review, the Brachiosaurus Discovery, retailing for $80 in the United States with 512 pieces, 3 minifigures, and 1 dino. This releases June 1st worldwide. Thanks to Tyler from LifeBricks on YouTube for getting this for me early. Check him out. The main draw of this set is our first LEGO Brachiosaurus with the modern LEGO dinosaur format, exclusive to this set, which is a fantastic design. The sizing on this is incredible and captures the tall neck and size with a new body piece, neck piece, and head piece shaped so well. The jaw is a separate arrangement and the tail is the one whole piece with a rubber end. This uses no Technic pins as the pieces all have pins dual molded in, so this is a 5 piece figure. The range and motion with the neck is more than I thought. It's necessarily large, but I like how many angles you could capture up and down. You could push it about this much down, and I love how you could just twist it all around and get more positioning there. The head has full rotation, open and closable mouth of course, and the tail to whip around. The top of the body has six studs. Yeah, having minifigures ride this beast is fantastic. I also love the printing throughout the top of the dino. One last thing to note is that this wave has the dino pieces in new paper bags. For the minifigures, this is the second set ever to have John Hammond. The last set was the $250 direct to consumer gate set. This is an exclusive design to the set with this one having a slightly different face printing, no gray on his beard and a slightly different smile. I wish this gave us a second closed mouth for Hammond, as both figures have an open mouth but it's a minor nitpick. The torso print is new too, closed up compared to the open design from the gate. I like how his cane build has the amber, and since this figure has a fedora accessory, there's no alternate face but it does have some nice back printing. The Alan Grant minifigure is surprisingly exclusive as well, with this torso print being very similar to the one used in the kitchen raptor chase set and gate set both a different neckerchief positioning and a variant on the wrinkles, that torso only appearing in this set. The face print is only found in one other set, which is the visitor center of this wave, which I did a review on. And here's a look at the back of the figure. And finally, Ellie Sattler is the only minifigure not exclusive to this set. Her hair piece is awesome, but also comes in the Triceratops set of this wave, as well as the Disney Aerial Palace set from last year, and as an option in the 2019 Build a Minifigure assortment. Her torso also comes in the 4 plus set of this wave, which is a lovely update from the one used in the gate and raptor chase previously, resorting to a coral color in this wave. Her legs come in 4 out of the 5 30th anniversary sets, where I really wish there was some printing at the side. Her face print is also found in the friend's apartment set and the triceratops set for this wave for the character. And I do like the shocked look, but I think the other face Ellie uses in the visitor center and in previous waves captures a shocked look so much more specific to the character in Laura Dern. I feel the same with her alternate face. And here's a look at the back of her torso. Anyways, for the build, let's take a look at the Jeep Wrangler first, which is the first time we're getting an officially licensed one based off of the Jurassic Park first movie. This is an absolute heater. There's stickers at the side with official Jeep licensing, and that's found on the other side as well. Of course, I would prefer if they were prints, especially since they are trapezoid shaped pieces instead of rectangular, but it is what it is. I like the clipped one by twos forming the mud guard. The front has a rectangular sticker of the Jurassic Park logo and an 18. There's another one found on the 2x4 on the hood. The 2x2 tile at the front grille is actually a print which is also found in the Jeep from the Dilophosaurus $20 set in this wave. The back has a spare tire. I'm just amazed at how many figures this vehicle fits so well. See, the roll screen is a build with some Technic pins and axles hinge on the back of the vehicle and it very easily opens where two minifigures can be fit inside via the 1x2s at the front, but then there's a 2x2 back sitting area and then a 2x2 stud area at the very back to sit a minifigure or stand them. And it looks fantastic stuffed with the figures of this set. The front has a steering wheel and switch. I'd say the only thing missing is some type of windshield wiper at the front of the windscreen build, but it's no big deal. As for the tree of the set, this is the one Alan, Lex, and Tim go atop and peer at Brachiosaurus. So I like that there's a platform for the tree top so that you would fit minifigures on there, even if Lex and Tim aren't in this particular set. 
The whole back of the tree uses as many of those half a cylinder shorter pieces, which gives the trunk some perfect roundness. The tree top is very annoying and a repetitive build of the many branches, but it makes for a nice authentically messy style, even if the build is not so fun. Many of these branches are easily adjustable with how there's clips and how they're pinned on. With a big bushy tree top, I wish the bottom of the tree had more substantial roots. Thinking back to the film, the tree base had roots that reminded me of trees I used to climb as a child, and here there's little attempt to capture the size of the enormous roots at the base. With this set being $80 and barely passing 500 pieces, I think the bottom of this build could have been beefed up. Regardless, there's a cracked dino egg, some nice coral colored flowers throughout the build, including a coral frog, which the frog piece in that color was introduced in 2022 and only in two other sets, which makes for a perfect part inclusion. To the left of the build, there's two great designs, which are unfortunately stickers, pointing out the Brachiosaurus photo spot and a sign which says no feeding, flash, or yelling. I could see that being useful for zoo mocks. Each side of the tree has some plate detailing to have some studs not on top techniques to just give more texture to the tree. Moving on from the builds, again, I like the box designs of this wave, which is an unpopular opinion in its color scheme and design, and the instructions advertise the other sets for the 30th anniversary wave. Which should I review next? Overall, the Brachiosaurus is a long overdue modernization exclusive to the set, and my gosh, LEGO kicked butt with its design. I love how poseable most of it is, even if you can't move the legs. The Jeep Wrangler is another incredibly welcome inclusion, a build that is near perfect in my opinion. And while I'm not a car head or whatever the heck it's called, I'm not somebody who's super particular of car designs, I love the color scheme and space captured with its interior. The tree is a memorable smaller build from the film, also fresh, though I do feel it could be more substantial at its base. I just wish the set was cheaper than $80. A lot about this set screams $70 price tag, but this feels a lot more worth its price than say the visitor center at $130 in this wave. This is an entirely new dinosaur design from Lego after all. I give this set a low 7 out of 10. Really, that all comes down to the ridiculous price in my opinion, even if it has new pieces. Let me know in the comments what you think of this set, and subscribe here for more Jurassic Park 30th anniversary reviews. Also let me know which you want to see reviewed next. Huge thanks to Lifebricks, and I'll see you later. Peace out. Bye.